Welcome to the I Work For Him podcast. I'm Michael Mariko, producer of the I Work For Him radio program, the voice of the faith and work movement. Our mission is to transform the workplace of every Christian into a mission field. What does that look like in your workplace? Let's find out right now. Hey, welcome to I Work For Him, a podcast dedicated to you, the working Christ follower in all kinds of jobs all over the country. We are the mouthpiece for the faith and work movement and your host, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. Thanks for listening today. We're excited to have you joining us. Listeners, you've heard me tell you about the Awaken Podcast Network before, but if you're new or you haven't checked it out yet, go to awakenpodcastnetwork.com. This is a place where you can go and not only find the voice of I Work For Him, but over 125 other voices that are speaking into different um, lanes of their work and how it might relate to you. So you may be a Christian working woman. There's podcasts for you. You may be in arts and entertainment. There is a podcast for you there. So go check that out, awakenpodcastnetwork.com. There are over 4 million primary and secondary school teachers in America. There are millions more in higher education. What does it look like for you to live out your faith at work in higher education? I don't know. Nobody's ever going to ask me to teach there, but Dr. Tara J.G. is with us today from Buffalo, New York, the snowmageddon capital of our country. (laughs) She has a doctorate in women's studies, and she's the CEO and founder of TMJ Consulting, where she provides innovative solutions for higher education. Dr. Tara, thank you so much for coming and I work for him to talk about higher education and living out your faith and work, and maybe sure you could check out Dr. Tara online, tmj-consulting.com. Dr. Tara, welcome to I Work For Him. Well, thank you so much, Jim and Martha, for having me on today. I'm, I'm just so excited to be with the both of you. I'd like to just offer a correction right here at the beginning of the podcast. Even though I practiced before the podcast, it's Tara, not Tara, it's Tara. And so I apologize. <laughs> I just created it. Dr. Tara, I practiced it. I wrote it he down. He did. He was even telling me. Oh. So that's, you know, in the moment. I'm sorry. In the moment. But that's so, what makes that's it real okay. and shows you that I am a fully flawed human being. So, all right, Dr. Tara, how did you come to be a Jesus follower? So one of my friends and I, we were in college and we used to sit in the back of a church and we used to just listen to the preaching and then we just really enjoyed it. And then one day I decided to go to a women's ministry and um, it was called, I don't know if I'm going to get the name exactly right, but it was called Women of Great Price and Pearls. And I just felt immediately drawn to give my life to Christ that day. It was an emotional time. I was a college student and a first generation student that I was going through some things at that time. And I just submitted my life to Christ. And I've been a follower ever since. And I just can't explain that feeling that I had that day. But I knew that I had to give myself over to Jesus and and walk with him. Wow. That, that's so amazing and such an encouraging story to hear because it happened during your college years, which are such critical times for making those life stamping decisions. That's so right. what a great influence that church had on you. So tell us about your work. What is it that you do to fill your time each and every day? Well, um, the work that I do is really working with college students and making sure that they persist each semester and working with organizations, ensuring that they have the appropriate strategy in place to make sure that students are progressing in terms of academics, professional and personal. So I'm always thinking about how we can understand our communities and connect them to colleges and universities that will give them the skills that they need to grow as entrepreneurs, as leaders in our community, as as faithful, individuals that will continue to be the light in the world. Um, And so a lot of that work really involves talking and a lot of listening with individuals and understanding where the heart of our students is right now, especially with the pandemic, Uh, and really helping our faculty and, and our staff to understand that we're changing every day. And as we change every day, we have to change our curriculum. But The one thing that I find most fulfilling about the work that I do is listening to the heart of students and understanding their stories and how they have such resilience and persistence in working through their educational pursuits. 
Mm -hmm. I have talked to one student and he immediately told me in the first 15 minutes that we were talking, I'm come here because I want to be a detective. My goal is I want to get this two year associate's degree. I'm going to be a police officer. Then I'm going to be a detective. Met him one time. Wow. And sometimes we don't always hear those stories because we don't ask the right questions. So I teach organizations how to ask the right questions and then how to deliver the services that students need so they can graduate, but also become a lifelong learner. So how long higher education is not something that a lot of us have experience in um, or even delve into unless we're like trying to get a kid and, you know, help them through college or something like that. But how long have you been involved in higher education? For over 17 years, my first experience was as a graduate student uh, in a HEOP program, Educational Opportunity, at a large university. And I had no idea that I would spend my whole life <laughs> doing this work that's so gratifying. And I end up being an academic advisor. And that gave me so many different viewpoints in terms of how students are successful. One, from their idea of being a, a scared high school you know, student coming in like, I don't know what I'm doing. Whereas on the other side, the parents are sitting next to them saying, you need to go to medical school. You're going to do this. And then the student telling me secretly on the side, hey, I really don't want to do that. And then becoming the mediator between parents and students. Mm. <laughs> That's how it all started. Wow. So, you know, in, in the Christian news, we tend to hear that higher education is not a very, it's not a place that really likes Christians anymore. That it really is a place where they teach a lot of anti-Christian things. Even though the entire education system was set up by Christians, I mean, Harvard and Yale and all of those were set up to be seminaries, to raise up people. Are Christians welcome today in higher education? I think that's a really good question, Jim. I feel welcome at all of the institutions that I've been at on my years of um, higher education, but there's sometimes when you do feel the pressure because when you're going into spaces that God is calling you to be the light, you think it's you, right? If you think it's really, they're attacking you, but no, you're bringing something from God that illuminates from you that's changing the system. So I really see those of us that are in um, higher education and we're Christians as the, the torch bearers. We're going in to higher education and we're leading our students in the pathway of their purpose. Um, and so sometimes it may feel unwelcoming, but one thing that I always know that I can call on my heavenly father and say, Lord, how do I move in this situation? What do I do? And I think one of the best strategies that I have is I have a, a print, a, a, a group of friends that I work with and uh, I pray with every day or a couple times a week to, to help me navigate some of the things that I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes our thinking about a situation, you might be like, oh, are they talking about me? No, you just have to keep moving and say, well, this is the purpose that God has given me for this particular season. And you keep moving in that. Um, and I'm not saying that it's easy, but I think it's a life lessons that God gives us. So you referred to, and I love that you said that we're like, the, you're like the torch bearers, you know, that are leading the way. So are, is there a need for more of those torch bearers in higher education? Absolutely. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> okay. We need a lot you, more. <laughs> you could do it. You could do a PSA here now to all of our listeners that, you know, because I think there's a lot of people that just need me. I don't know. Do they need permission? Do they need somebody to speak that into them? So maybe even right now, just talk to the listeners that maybe they're they're drawn towards higher education or some facet of it, and they just need to hear that they're they could they are needed. What would you well, say would, to them? <laughs> well, this is what I would say. I would say, go beyond your fears. I think about Joshua and how you know he was going into the promised land, and and God said, "Be strong and courageous." It's this moment that you just have to step into and know that you're going to have an impact on the students for years to come. 
And one of the things that I would share most that I enjoy about working in higher education, and I'll say it again, are the students. Yeah. You know, I had one particular student that I recall, I was working with her. She, she got up, she said, I'm going to move to California. She had so much faith. And she's like, I don't have a job. I don't have any money. I'm just going to pick up my life and I'm going to move. So I, I went and met with her for dinner and we talked about what she was going to do. She said, we just didn't know. We don't know. And they left and they let me know when they got there, they were met by a woman who gave them apartment and didn't check their credit. Well, unbeknownst to the woman who gave them an apartment, they didn't have good credit, but she accredits that to God. And then I really think these are the kind of stories that we take away because those torch bearing relationships that we have last for a lifetime. This same student came a couple of weeks, a couple of years ago to one of my book signings and surprised me. So you just never know what kind of impact you're going to make. And that can happen not only in higher education, but also in secondary education and primary education. And even, even in, in uh, you know, pre-K four, I mean, you're making an impact on these kids' lives and there's a desperate need for Christ followers to get involved in education. Now in higher education, you want to make sure that your social media is clean so that, because they're going to check all that before you go into higher education. They're going to, they're going to check you out. I think they're checking it for everything. Well, now, I understand, but, <laughs> but in the higher education, they're going to look at, mm -hmm. at what kinds of things you post on higher education or on social media before they hire you, because they're going to vet you. They're not looking for conservative Christ followers to be who follow Jesus in, in higher education. That's not what they're looking for, but yet God knows that they're desperately needed. That mm -hmm. is so true. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the things that, you know, I tell students and they're getting ready to go to college and they're like, we don't want to compromise our, our beliefs. I said, you don't have to. You be who you're called to That's be. That's right. And, you know, they tell, you see these stories where students are posting uh, things on social media and then their admissions is rescinded. Mm. Rescinded. I mean, Harvard has rescinded, you know, admissions acceptances from students based on their philosophy in life. And so... You know, it's so important to have these conversations with our, our young people and say, you know, be true to who you are. And it's OK to express your faith. Mm. Yeah, it is. Hey, today we're talking with Dr. Tara J.G. That's how you can find her on LinkedIn. That's how you can find her on social media. That's how you can find her all over the place. How about TMJ-Consulting.com, TMJ-Consulting.com. We'll be right back with more from Dr. Tara. When I was young, I always dreamed of being on camera because on camera, I could always make funny faces and be ridiculous. YouTube is that dream. There are tons of I work for him videos out there on YouTube, each one designed to help you unlock God's purpose for you and your work. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. I work for him. That's I work, the number four, him. Hey, we're having a conversation today with Dr. Tara JG. We'd love to be able to have you guys get involved with her. Check her out online, tmj-consulting.com, tmj-consulting.com. All right, tell your story of how your faith is impacting your work on a daily basis. Give us another story of, of what it looks like for you to, to sneak your faith in, bring in a kingdom principle, even if it doesn't have chapter and verse attached to it, on a daily basis as you're working in higher education. Yes, definitely. I could give you another story. Um, I was working at a small private institution and uh, my boss at the time, he was a provost and uh, I was just, you know, in there talking and, you know, we just were sharing about what we wanted to do for programming. I was a director of multicultural affairs at the time. And he said, Tara, work smarter, not harder. And we've, we've remained friends for many years and, I've been posting on social media. And then one day he sent me a message. He said, I really enjoy your messages of faith that you post in social media. I didn't realize that because we never spoke about it. You know, he had mentored me to move up in my career, sent me to a leadership program and he was working closely with me, but I hadn't realized it, mm. that the whole reason why he was so encouraging and we were both followers of Christ. Hmm. That's wow. so great. You know, and that it's such a great point that you never know 
you know, in any position of education, you have influence, whether it's your students or your coworkers or parents or, you know, whoever that might be that you're touching and you have that uh, level of influence over them. So let's talk about how you're helping women specifically navigate higher education. Because you have a doctorate in women's studies. So I figure because you're a doctorate and you're a woman and you get a doctorate in women's studies that, that this is what you're doing. Yes, absolutely. I think um, I'll talk about that same mentor, uh, the provost and the president at the time. They saw something in me and they said, you know, uh, Tara, we really want you to be involved with what's going on in the region here in Buffalo. And I was became a part of a women's organization that helped women grow professionally in their careers. Because what you find in higher education, women and women of color have a challenging time moving up the ladder in terms of promotion uh, and growing in their career and getting opportunities. So I had a unique opportunity to work with women in this region here in Buffalo, and we call it Western New York, and bring together uh, uh, probably about 40, 50 women from different colleges to talk about what are some of the challenges that they face in higher education and how we can be more confident and moving into the next level of our careers. And one of the things that we learned in one of the breakfast sessions was that women don't typically apply for higher level administrative roles like vice presidents or presidents because they say, oh, I only have three things on the list where they're asking for 10. Whereas versus men, they're going to apply even if they only have one. <sighs> why is that? Isn't That's it, an interesting comment. Why, why is that? Men are just like, nope. Maybe they'll hire me. I don't know. <laughs> and I think it's confidence. Just uh, believing that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens amen. you is, is the one thing that I stand on. And I think one of the turning points with our whole group is that we decided to put together a conference to, to have women talking about what are the necessary steps that you can take and, and work together with your gifts and your purpose in education, higher education, and reach across the aisles and help your, your fellow sister in moving. And then we started having dialogue about resumes and, and curriculum vitas and really mentoring and supporting one another in doing that. Um, and then I end up meeting with some presidents and they said, well, you know, why don't we have some brainstorming sessions with women? And so women had coaching sessions right on the spot with presidents. And they said, okay, this is what you need to do. This is how you can move into those careers. And there's a lot of women that have moved up to associate vice presidents and presidents. And um, I've learned from a lot of great women on the pressures of what it means to be in higher education. And it's not always easy, but I always think about to whom much is given, much is required. Well, it's never easy, I imagine. It's never easy. You said it's not always easy. I'm guessing it's never easy. <laughs> hey, we're talking today with Dr. Tara JG. Check her out online, tmj-consulting.com, tmj-consulting.com. No, we're not selling her services, but that's how you can find her. You can also find her at Tara JG on LinkedIn. It's easy to find her. Just type in Tara JG and you're going to find her everywhere. One of the ways I keep Jim under control is to tell him to go write something. It's sometimes the only quiet I get during the day. I would love it if you would go and subscribe to our weekly blog so I can keep getting those quiet moments every week. I could use more, but I will be grateful for at least that one half hour. Jim's blog is written from his heart on what our father is speaking loudly to him right now. I think you'll enjoy it. Iworkforhim.com and click on the word blog to subscribe. You know, I just love the fact that you, without even saying it, you talked about how women were helping each other to excel and to move forward. And, you know, what a great example. We talk often on I Work For Him about the fact that you can live out biblical principles without stating that they're biblical principles. And, you know, helping your neighbor, um, whatever that you, you, there are so many biblical principles in what you were just sharing what a great example of helping to advance other people by helping them with confidence and giving them um, pointers and tips and things like that. And I hope that our listeners are hearing that, that, you know, we are, we, we 
get told that we need to be competitive all the time, that we need to, you know, think of ourselves only and, you know, all of those things, stepping over people. But boy, that does nothing but really hurt the situation. And I just love this example of you helping, you know, all these women helping each other to um, grow and do better. And what if more of us could do that? What a great thing that would be. <laughs> all right. So, I, you know, the audience doesn't know yet, but you're a mom too. You got a, <laughs> and you got two teenagers. They're yes. daughters. So you got high maintenance kids. Yep. So they're not listening, so it's okay. I mean, they're, t- they're teenage daughters. So you're, you're, you're. It's a, an assumption. You're, you, you've got a busy life. Not yes. just, not only involved in, in counseling and consulting with other organizations and with people, you've also got two teenagers that you're raising up to get into the same programs that you're influencing. How do you maintain a healthy balance between the demands of work life and demands of family and certainly two kids who need you now more than ever because they're teenagers? Yeah, I was just laughing with a friend the other day. I said, I thought it was easier to be with them when they were toddlers and now because they're teenagers. Absolutely. And we laughed. Um, But I think one of the things that's really important to me is that I am on the line with a group of women and we pray every morning at 5 a.m. They're a support system. Um, They pray with us, me individually. They pray with us in in groups. And then we have at least twice a month, we have sessions on Saturday where we're getting enriched with the word of God. So that's very important in my Mm. life. And then having family support, family. I have my mom, you know, and other family members here that can step in at sometimes and say, you know, Michaela or JL, what's happening? (laughs) And then for me, really, it's the healthy eating and reminding myself that I have to take a break and I have to step back, um, do exercise, walking, I like listening to music, just trying to have that balance so I can make sure that I'm not taking on too much, but only just enough of what is God is calling me to do. And that balance is, and I know it's not really a balance. It's, it's a give and a take, but you know, you're involved in higher education it's, and the call in your life is powerful, but you have to be able to balance that with the other stuff that you have. I love that those words you've spoken. It's, it's such a great encouragement. You know, I just feel like there's one last thing, you know, before we um, got on the call with you today, we talked about the fact that uh, there is a desperate need for more believers in Christian education. So just speak to our listeners. In education. In education. I'm sorry. In uh, Yes, in all education. Probably in Christian education too. <laughs> in all areas. So just speak to the listener that may be at a point where they're thinking, you know, I want to do something different, or maybe they got to have some background that would make them ready to take a step, but they haven't taken it because they're maybe fearful. Just speak into them right now um, about education and higher education and where they could go. Yeah, education, the possibilities are endless. And I think more and more we're finding out that our students and even our children need the support of, of us more than ever, not just the teachers or the school counselors, but we need Christian counselors in the school system. We also need those individuals that have a listening heart, a listening ear, and that can really provide the, the loving feedback of Christ in the school system. Even outside, just a conversation um, with the student can really transform their life. And don't ever think that you're not valuable. You are valuable. You're fearfully and you're wonderfully made. And even if you don't think you have the experience, the pathway has already been made for you. Hmm. Just go ahead and take that step of faith and you'll be surprised what you'll find on the other side. Hmm. Fabulous, fabulous words. I want to make sure I put a shout out here to Caroline Mendez from Pinnacle Forum for Women. She's the one that made us the connection with Dr. Tara. And we want to make sure we give a shout out Pinnacle Forum for Women. Maybe you should check that out online. And I believe it is, you can go to pinnacleforum. And then forward slash women. I can't remember if it's .org or .com. Dr. Tara, JG, thank you for being on I Work For Him today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Make sure you check her out online, tmj-consulting.com. Reach out to her. Maybe you've got some more questions for her and you, we didn't ask the questions. Well, now you can ask her directly. Reach out to her on LinkedIn. Just type in Tara JG. You're listening to I Work For Him with your host, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. We're Christ followers. Our workplace 
It's our mission field. But ultimately, I I work for for him. him. Thank you for listening to the I Work For Him podcast with your hosts, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. Please visit IWorkForHim.com to learn more about connecting your faith and work, to join the I Work For Him nation, or subscribe to our weekly blog. You can also follow us on social media at I Work For Him to stay up to date and meet our guests. If today's message spoke to you, please subscribe, rate, and review the show on your favorite podcast platform. Your review will launch more workplace missionaries across America. That's at I Work For Him and online, IWorkForHim.com. I work the number four, him.com.